Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. And we're back, we're live. We are young talents making way all here on FinTech Hawaii. I'm Andrea Gabrielli, I'm your host. And every Tuesday we talk about things and science that matter to Hawaii with our brilliant school students and their science projects. And today, we don't have just one young talent, but we have three of them making way with a project carried out to investigate the effects of sunscreen chemicals on coral reefs. It is my pleasure to introduce you to this marvelous team from Island Pacific Academy in Kapole. Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> so, uh, some introductions first. So we have uh, here um, Audrey um, Ramsbottom. Is that right? Yeah. And you are, hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hello, nice to have you here. And you, have, you are an eighth grader mm -hmm. at Island Pacific Academy. Yes. Welcome, welcome. Um, and then we have in the middle, we have Zahir Golko. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> nice to have you here, Zahir. Welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. And then finally, last but not least, we have uh, Emma Rose Lai Owen. Yes. Nice to have you here. Nice Thank to you. have you here. Welcome. And we also welcome uh, Michelle Bradley, who is here with us today. She is the vice principal at Island Pacific Academy. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Welcome, Michelle, welcome. So, um, coral reefs and sunscreen chemicals that end up in our oceans in the water. Um, what's the big story about this? What's the importance of the science projects that you carried out at Island Pacific Academy in Kapolei? Well, when you think about it, the ocean is a huge part of the culture here in Hawaii. And with that, we need to protect our, sin, our skin from the sun. So we all use sunscreen, right? Sun is really bright exactly. in Hawaii, yeah. But there's a lot of chemicals in our sunscreens that we use that do affect our coral reefs. And we need our coral reefs because without them, we lose shelter for lots of animals in our ecosystem. And it really could affect Hawaii. And, and also, I guess the tourism has a big exactly. importance mm -hmm. because the tourists come to see the reefs, uh, the yeah. beautiful beaches yeah. and oceans, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, the sunscreen they wear to protect themselves is harming exactly. our corals. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. So, um, what is exactly a coral reef? Uh, it's uh, uh, What is it? Um, a coral reef is a is made up of multiple different species of coral um, form that come together to form a reef. And on that, many fishes and tropical fishes and algae can live. And they're normally found towards inner shores. And some of them can be found a little bit deeper, but typically a coral reef is what people think mm -hmm. of is like around Hawaii, around the bays of all the different corals. Wow, and so they need sunlight to thrive. So it's basically a living organism, Yes. yes. coral reef. Suns wow. or, um, coral is a plant and an animal, so they do photosynthesize. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. wow. So um, the coral that we see, the kind of um, limestone layers, rocky kind of mm -hmm. thing, that's an animal. It's actually yes. many animals. It's many yeah. animals, animals together. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of different cells clustered together to form one coral, and that coral slowly grows by producing more cells that, um, depending on if it's asexually reproducing or sexually reproducing in the water. Wow, okay. And so you carried out the science projects to understand what happens when these tiny animals that make up the, the, the reef, the corals, yeah. come in contact with the chemicals yeah. in, the, in the sunscreens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what areas did you consider uh, for this project? So we chose um, to use our, our most, the most commonly found coral in Hawaii, which is the Hawaiian lace coral, oh. or Poslapore damacornis. We use the, the youngest stage of where it grows, so like right after it's born. Um, we use the larvae in its youngest stage because using the sunscreen and how it would affect it, it would, uh, we wanted to see like how it would change over time and how it would it affect its growth later on when it grows up. And I believe we have some pictures. Maybe let, let, let's have our first slide up so we can see something of your of the work that you carried out. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so here, oh, is that Christmas? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we Take did our yeah. things do, during winter break just because we we're all available and we had the time to do it together. Okay. It took okay. a week overall yeah, just to prepare project. and like watch, observe over time. So what are we looking at here? Is this your lab at Island Pacific Academy? 
No, so we actually went in town to Sand Island where oh. we did this experiment at the Hawaii State Coral Restoration Nursery. Oh, okay. Because it's illegal to work with coral without a permit. That's fine. Yeah, we want to. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so, this uh, th this experiment that you carried out uh, to investigate uh, these coral reefs. How did you um, carry them out? How did you um, do it? You, you were part of this uh, uh, institute, so you were able to work with professionals. Yes. And so what did you learn from them as part of your, uh, this research project? Um, actually, what was really cool is when we went there, they were really, um, they wanted to let us do most of it. So we did all of our research. We, they, they only like, kind of helped us with getting our materials and lab space and the actual coral uh, larvae itself. But in terms of them like teaching us or like doing the project, we did it ourselves. That was really cool. Wow. Yeah, they were yeah. there just mainly for guidance. Yeah, and just so they so that they were there and mostly supervised so that it wasn't mm -hmm. illegal. Exactly. No, no, that's right. Yeah, we want to make yeah. sure. That, yes. But you were able to see these labs and this. this yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the reason this experiment was brought to our attention, or to use um, the two sunscreen chemicals we used, were oxybenzone and octanoxate, and we used those because the legislator was trying to pass a bill at that time. Um, to ban those two chemicals in sunscreen, so they yeah. wouldn't be allowed to be sold in the state. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, um, so these chemicals, so let's see some other pictures here so we can see more about um, what you did. Uh, so for, uh, we're looking at uh, Zahir here um, using a microscopes with some samples. And uh, I, I suppose, how tiny are this, these organisms? Um, so these organisms can actually be seen with the eye itself, where they're just swimming around. They look like little pieces of sand, basically. Oh, okay, so yeah, tiny, so you can, tiny. Yeah, so you can see them swimming around. Um, but the reason we were using a microscope is I needed to see, one, if there was settlement, um, which is when the coral larvae um, attached itself to a substrate or a rock, or which we use a little, um, I guess like a little pod made out of cement, but like of course, pod. yeah, yeah. 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 Pod. So the way it works basically is that this organism uh, lives on the corals and builds yeah. the yeah. coral, and then how does it um, it reproduce basically? Um, Pastoral dermacornis is actually a special or type of coral because it asexually reproduces its own larvae, meaning that it can produce it itself. It doesn't need to have a partner. Oh, okay. So basically, the larvae are released into the ocean current, and then that's how basically the, yeah. the, yeah. the reefs develop. And that's terrific. Okay. Yeah. So let's see one of those larvae. We have, I believe, we have a picture here, so we can see uh, what actually looks like. Okay. So here, what are we looking at here? Um, so this is swimming larvae. So before um, the larvae settles, it swims around and looks for a place um, to settle. To settle. Okay. Okay. So they are tiny dots with um, yellow marks and white. They're mostly white, the species. Um, this, this coral is actually more of the uh, unhealthy side because yeah. a natural coral color would be more brownish, yeah, it more It depends healthy on the species, color. too. Oh, okay. Yeah. It depends on the species. and Okay. So, yeah. yeah, but the coral that we were using, a natural color would be brown and it would mm -hmm. take about like two weeks to settle onto like something like a substrate. Yeah. Um, so these ones over here, they're, we, caught, we counted them as unhealthy because like as you can see, they're white and they have like this unhealthy color yeah, and oh okay yeah. okay that's terrific okay and so um you basically had this larvae this swimming larvae they they move around and then um we uh, you uh, what did you do as part of this project you let them float or you, you um, yeah so how we went around uh, our experiment is in the beginning itself well, yeah. um actually they weren't there yeah. for this part um so i was there at the lab and oh, you were there oh, yeah so yeah. basically how it works is the first day was the longest day um we had to be there i'd be there because that's the day where i had to go into the lab and they had like a container mm -hmm. full of larvae that they just produced that week oh okay and so they so, produced yeah, yeah. So they have a bunch of colonies there that are set up in like farms so that they can produce their own larvae for testing yeah. themselves right so um after they gave me that tube i had to go through and count a total amount that we were using so i was around 270, right? Give or take a couple. Cause it's yeah, because it's yeah. wow. it was kind of hard to count them because they're small, so I had to go and use um, a little pipette. pipette. Yeah, I had to go pick them out. After that, what we did was we put them 
Actually, no, we counted them, and then we got these tiles. They're yeah. three uh, They're fourths? little ceramic tiles. Yeah, three that you can get inch tiles. The yeah. Store. And then what we did was we applied a layer of sunscreen onto them. Yeah. On um, two tiles, and then we had these plastic containers, and that's where we put the two of our tiles with, I think it was 10 larvae, right? Uh, yes, yes. 10 larvae. 10 larvae into one, and that would be one containment. Now we did a 12 by 3 by Dude, so we had like yeah. it was we had a really big experiment. We had um, 270 larvae in total, so we had 27 cups. So all of them would have like 10 each inside. Uh, so for example, we would have um, a control. We had we had our controls sunscreen one, which is oxide benzene, and sunscreen two, which was octanoxate. We had our controls and different different settle times, um, settlement times, our exposure times. Sorry, where uh, we used one hour, six hour, and twelve hours. So in total, um, we would exposure have exposure to these yeah, chemicals. Yeah, exposure yeah. to the chemicals. Um, we also did these times because that kind of replicates wave patterns and sets. So about one oh. hour is the initial time, then six hours is between a, like a pattern, then 12 hours be a full day and a set. Wow. So that's why we use those different times. Uh, you know, just um, we're curious here at FinTech, how long did it take for you to complete the, this uh, two the experiment? The exposure part or the whole the, the whole experiment because Three? it sounds like a lot of work Three? here that you uh, carried out. A week. Ten. No, yeah, about a week. About, about a week. We went back yeah, after, didn't we? We started off with the. Okay. We started off <laughs> with the. Um, with Z was working at uh, the the exposures for the exposures, yeah. and then um, six days afterward, we just watched over time. So yeah, in total, it was just seven days. A well, week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see some more pictures so we can see more mm -hmm. uh, about this. Uh, um, okay, so here, these are, what are these? Yeah. Um, this is some dying coral. It, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so basically when um, coral is on its last resort, you know, trying to fight to survive, they sometimes shoot out their algae part. Oh, okay. Which is what you're seeing in the yeah. water there, that white exactly. stuff. The white the stuff. White around stuff yeah, yeah, around yeah. the ball. It's the stringy thing. Yeah, yeah. Usually you'll see later on in our other pictures, they don't do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's kind of like an abandoned ship type situation where they're just trying to survive. Because they were affected by the exactly. chemicals? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's... So these th these um, these are still larvae anyway, and they were not able to attach to no. anything. No. So they're just uh, so we didn't around. really have anything to attach to. Okay, yeah. okay. So let's see some more pictures, and we can see some. Um, okay. Oh, so this, this is, is a healthy larvae. That's an healthy yeah, one. Yeah, okay. you see this because the color is not white; it's like a light brownish. As you dark were mentioning, brown. the yeah. brown. Yeah. And in this photo, the quality is not too good, but it feels a little better. You could probably see the lines on it, which mean that it's healthily growing and. Mm -hmm. It's not in any stress. You can see some kind of stripes yeah. and exactly. yeah. or more brown yeah. areas on this. Uh, it's very tiny, yeah. though, as you mentioned yes. earlier. The yeah. color and the shape was really important throughout the project because that's how we would um, determine if it was a healthy or unhealthy coral. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's see um, some. Okay, so this uh, this is another uh, lava, I believe. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. that one is what we would basically call dead already, where um, it's basically just swimming or it doesn't even swim around anymore it just floats to the surface and then um, it, we would say it, it's exploded when uh, all of its algae like just shoots out and then it's trying to defend itself but it can't anymore and it's just exploded yeah so you mentioned how many of these tests did you uh, um, carry out had how many told so we had a control we had a control of three sets which was because we had wanted to have different trials you had a control then we had a SS1 which was mean uh, the oxybenzene Oxy Oxy was the first sunscreen and SS2, which is octanoctite, and we have three of each. So it was a three by three. Experience. So it would be uh, control one hours, and then there would be an A, B, and C control six hours, A, B, and C control twelve hours, A, B, and C. Yeah, and we did and that for the SS1 and the SS2. We had the three rep. Where did you grow them? Um, at the lab. So there was the little trailer that we worked in because they had a um, a hard desk area. That's where we worked. And then in the and main... we saw it on the picture yeah. earlier. Yeah. yeah, so that's like the trailer we were in. And yeah. then a little bit away from that was in that was their main building. And then that's where there's in a separate room these tanks, like these large tubs, that we got a little slot for to put our um, times in. Mm -hmm. Did you have to use the microscope to check the health status? 
shadow. So, um, this, so the color of the, the, the tiny larvae. Not really. You, not you could yeah. see it pretty clearly. And the only reason we're using the microscope was if there was settlement, we used the microscope to see how it settled. Because mm -hmm. depending on how it settles also um, tells us if it's healthy yeah. or not. Mm -hmm. If it's and like on its side. Because the or, mouth, um, a healthy coral settlement is supposed to be in the very center. Yeah, okay. But if it's on the side or upside it's down. Not in, in upside down or settled where we weirdly we know it's deformed. Wow, mm. okay. Thank you, thank you. So we're learning here on FinTech Hawaii Young Talents Making Way about corals and what happens to them when they come in contact with chemicals. And we're doing this thanks to this uh, uh, bright team from Island Pacific Academy. We're going to take a break, but we're going to be back soon. Stay tuned. Hey, how come he gets to go in? He's a service dog. Well, I could get a vest too. You're not even a service dog. He's trained to assist his owner. Well, I can do whatever he can do. Wow, did he just open the door? Yep. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that either. He's trained for over two years to become a service dog. Man, I wish I could be a service dog. back we're live here in young talents making way we're, we're ha we have here a bright award-winning team from island pacific academy and we're learning about what happens to the, the the corals when they come in contact with these chemicals that we find in our uh, sunscreen lotions and everything so thank you for being here thank you thank you all uh, so uh, what are some of your results, you know, about the, this project? You sampled a lot of um, larvae of corals. Uh, you saw what happened to them when they came in contact with, with these chemicals. So what are your results? So for our results, um, our controls, they stayed fairly consistent. We did have like an unnatural drop. Yep. where we had a lot of um, deaths, and I can't remember which exposure time it, it was. was. It was in our control. Hours. I know, our six hours. Yeah, it was in our control. It was in our control six hours. Really weird, because the, the, oh, on screen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so we noticed that the controls were more alive compared to the two sunscreens, which means like the sunscreens are basically unhealthy and they're not natural and they do harm, kill, and deform the corals. But overall, our coral, um, what we do know is that our controls looked healthier than our um, sunscreen, and even though there is a drop, and we're not exactly sure why, sometimes that happens when you're working with live animals, things happen. That's right. And what we mean by our controls were, the, um, we had three batches like we explained earlier. And in our control batches, that means there is nothing in the water, like chemicals, there's nothing in it just besides the corals. Yeah. And so that's why it was really weird that we had a lot of death there. It was. So what are the most hazardous chemicals then that are present in these lotions? So we used oxybenzone and octanoxate, and I think the oxybenzones, they had the most deaths overall, and they um, bleached the coral the most, which means yeah. they lost its color, and you know, coral bleaching is a really big thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. The octanoctite was a little bit weirder because it didn't have as much death, but it had less, it made them deformed. Um, it made them really small. Yeah, like, oh. we like saw the coral like so the yeah. on the, Wow. Okay. Which is interesting because the oxybenzone, they didn't get smaller, they just um, lost their color and they died off and um, 
but the octanoxite, like we we would, because it's the same size coral, right, pretty much. And then we would look at it, and then towards the end, we were having a lot of trouble looking at it because it was so yeah, small. Yeah, it like shrunk down. And that's when you had to use a microscope. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. we can all agree that the oxybenzone is probably the most harmful. The, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's found in almost every sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 carried out this this um, science project at Island Pacific Academy, but you also presented this. Uh, as part of the state uh, uh, science and engineering fair, the state of Hawaii science and engineering fair. Uh, and I, if, if I remember well, you also won, had some awards that were mm -hmm. given to you, that were granted to you as part of this uh, experience. How was it? Can you, what can you tell us about it? Um, well, I was the only one there because these two guys are on a trip, so oh. <laughs> I was just there alone. But I had, I really enjoyed it. You were it. representing the team. Yes, yes, I was. I really enjoyed it because, like, I got to see people that were interested in, like, learning about their coral because they can relate to my life. They like going to the beach. They like going outdoors and using sunscreen, and they're, they're, just one of them was a NOAA judge, and then she's like, oh, that's really, that's a really good thing that you're learning about what happens to coral when it gets affected by sunscreen. So I was able to talk to them and explain to them um, like what happens later on. And I made it to finals too. And then um, wow. they were also talk, they were all just staring at me like, oh, what is she gonna talk about? And then I just explained to them, oh, this is, um, this is our project and what is coral good or bad, or sorry, sunscreen, is it good or bad good for or the bad. coral? Yeah. And then I also talked about some like Pro or some sunscreens that we did find that were supposedly healthy. Like if you go to Costco, sometimes they sell like reef safe sunscreen and we, I, I actually bought one of them. I don't know what, how it affects the coral, but that's like a good thing to test on too. So what, what should we all do? What kind of recommendations do you have for our audience uh, in terms of trying to, you know, not burn our skins, but at the same time don't, <laughs> harm the corals? Um, zinc is a good alternative. It's um, safer. Zinc? Supposedly safer, yes. Oh, okay. Um, but sometimes a lot, the reef safe sunscreens can be more expensive. Oh, so and that is there aren't a lot of natural alternatives to using sunscreens that don't contain oxybenzone or octanoxate or really similar chemicals that still affect it the same way. Like you can find a bunch of different kinds, but the SPF on them wouldn't be as high as like a other brands that uses chemicals. Mm -hmm. And we also found in our research by, while we were researching these chemicals that oxybenzone has been ten has been found in bloodstreams, exactly. right? That, like, so, like it stays in your blood. Yeah, basically. oxybenzone stays in your bloodstream. Oh. After you use it. After you use it, okay. So. And has some, and not been completely proven, but there are looks that it can possibly cause skin cancer later in life. Oh wow! I, yeah, so long-term effects. Yeah, I yeah. just heard on the radio the other day that um, the legislative people did ban the sunscreens that have oxybenzone and octanoxate as their These active two. ingredients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like so, the brands like Copper Tone, Neutrogena, and Neutrogena. Oh, yeah. Okay. Those two are they have like higher levels of oxybenzone benzone from our research right. and octanoxate so um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't use sunscreen but maybe um, I went to Costco and I found Alba Botanica where it was like 100% reef safe or supposedly so so um, I just recommend like maybe you guys should just go out there and maybe find something more natural to try and, yeah. and protect. Yeah. Just it's, be aware. Yeah. And if yeah. you were wondering where you could figure out if, if your sunscreen does have it or not, if you look at where the ingredients are, the, it should be under the active ingredients area and you should mm -hmm. see so how much is in take it. Take the box and yeah. Between, or, yeah. behind there is the, yeah. 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 Okay, okay. Now, um, so you carried out this project at uh, Island Pacific Academy, which was also awarded the, the it was the top one in your category at the state fair, the yeah. animal yeah. science, so we want to say this, yeah, okay. And, uh, um, but you are um, eighth graders at Island Pacific Academy. What do you see uh, in the future ahead of this, you know, with, with your experience, this science projects, uh, what would you like to, uh, to do in the future? What would you like to continue doing? I think that, this project was a really great experience for all of us and that we all kind of want to go into careers in at least marine biology or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. have to Related exactly. to this topic, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, are you gonna uh, 
continue with this research with corals? Uh, are you going to go more at other fair, science yeah. fairs? Or? We would first have to contact our lab and like we would talk to between ourselves because some people are moving to different schools and stuff. Oh, but yeah. we would have to contact the lab that we worked at, which was the Hawaii State Coral Restoration Nursery, yeah. and see what their schedules are and see if we can even get a time slot that we could work on future projects. Yeah. But like our continuation projects would be like testing the more natural or what they call reef safe sunscreen. So mm -hmm. we would use that and then we would compare it to like maybe other natural um, sunscreens and things or like that. Or maybe a harmful exactly. sunscreen to see. Yeah. What's the difference? It's going to be interesting to see, yeah. you know, different effects of other chemicals mm -hmm. as yeah. well. The sunscreen yeah. we used was a lotion, not a yeah. spray, because yeah. if we were going to use a spray, we found it hard to get an even coating, because every sunscreen tile, like we said before, we put a thin coating of layer on it, and that's so we could control the amount on each thing. With a spray, we found it might be a little bit harder for us to control that, so maybe in the future we could find a way, but for now we just tested the lotions. But is there a difference between the lotions and the sprays. Mm. The spray the is more oily. Yeah. Like it, it, when you put it on your skin, um, you tend to have more oil. Oh, okay. To and action. that could possibly mean because the oil, you know, oil and water, how it like flows to the surface. Yeah, that's right. It yeah, was so flow that yeah. could have a difference, maybe out in the wild, but we do not know that for sure. Exactly. Because and maybe the corals are below water, so yeah. maybe it doesn't really. Okay, okay. So um, this is a really nice conversation we're having today. Uh, time flies, unfortunately. We have only about uh, two minutes left for our uh, conversation here today. Uh, what would you like to tell our audience to make them a little bit more aware of the, uh, this topic and the effects that these chemicals can have on the corals? Um, I think um, with this project, we found a problem um, that people already knew of, but we proved it. And it's our job as a community to save our coral reefs and just be aware of it. And hopefully someday, whether it's us or some other scientist, um, we solve it and we can find an alternative. I would say to our group of audience listening, wherever, is to be a little bit more careful when you buy your sunscreens. It doesn't take that long. Just turn over the bottle or package. Just look at what's in the actual sunscreen and when you're using it and think about the effect of it having not on yourself but to the ecosystem itself. I would just say to just keep swimming, but just be aware <laughs> that there are other little creatures swimming around and without them maybe we wouldn't have like poke or any like all that seafood in the water. And like we kind of, it's a Hawaiian thing where we like use our, we, we depend our staple, or some of our staples depend on the animals inside the ocean. So without our coral reefs, um, it, it could just basically ruin some traditions and things like that. So just be more aware that um, even though like it's, you might enjoy something, just be aware. Emalama Ikekai, take care of the ocean. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we 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 thanks this this brilliant and award-winning team from Island Pacific Academy. And so um, uh, Aubrey uh, Ramsbottom, uh, Zahir Goldko, and Emma Rose Laioen. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank us. you all. Thank you, for thank you all. Us. This was great conversation, and really, we made content and people aware of this uh, uh, problem. And so uh, we have been watching uh, uh, young talents making way here on FinTech Hawaii. I'm Andrea Gabrielli, and next Tuesday we'll be back for more. Stay tuned. <laughs>